The darkness that stalked outside the window was such a deep shade of black that it seemed to be infinite. Infinite, like the dark reaches of space. She could barely see anything in front of her, let alone her own two feet. Of course, her eyes hadn't become so used to the dark. It didn't matter how long she had been there. She would never be used to the dark. Still, she had some hope. After all, the window revealed a great rolling landscape of green and brown, passively illuminated by the light from the moon. The colors were faded, but she could still see the green blades of grass and the brown bark of the trees that rode on the various sized hills surrounding her home. Trees as tall as the sky, trees as short as castles, trees that were thick, trees that were thin, old trees, young trees, dead trees, distant. They all surrounded her home like a protecting army, an army that used to be fresh in her mind from such long ago. She shook her head, her blonde hair rustling and a single strand falling to her face that barely stuck in front of her eyes, a blocking distortion in her sight. The only noises were the occasional chirps from crickets in the distance. It was silent enough that she could hear her heart beating in her supple chest. The silence was normal. The animals went to sleep during the night. If only she had been lucky. She sighed, standing up from her bed, the white sheets rustling from her moves. The bed was covered with just a thin sheet of silk, not enough to make her comfortable for sleep. Underneath was a stone pedestal that was carved out of rock. Each night she had tried to get some sleep, only to fail as the pain in her back became unbearable from laying on such a detestable surface. She couldn't sleep. In fact, she hadn't slept in a long time. The princess glanced over at the rock wall that was erected against her bed. In the darkness, she could make out the numerous scratches etched into the stone. They lined up from the head spot of her bed to the right, ending at the opposite end of the room. Over her years of stay at her home, she had etched them into the wall, counting the days that she had been staying in the room. She carefully recounted their numbers. 1,752. 1,752. That was the amount of days and nights that she had been imprisoned. It hadn't passed so quickly, seeing as she couldn't remember the last time that she had had any sleep. Her life had become a boring routine, staying up all night and day, looking out of the window to the world outside. She had almost gone mad from the boredom, but she couldn't be mad. No, she was sane. As sane as her mother and father, the queen and king as sane as she was when she had been imprisoned by the evil wizard. She was sane, but sometimes she began to grow worried. Sometimes she would hear voices. After all, how long could a princess go without sleep? Not long, she thought to herself. She looked down, down from the tower, and soon she could see the snow that was covering the land outside. White snow, as white as the skin on her body. Her thin, frail body. The rough remains of her pink dress barely fitting her slim body. Her hair, once blonde and beautiful and so long, was now falling out in clumps, twisted tangles from days not washing it. She could feel her stomach rumble pain radiating in her belly. The stomach was committing self-cannibalism, eating itself in desperateness. She shivered, goosebumps rising up and down her arms. It was cold. So, so cold. The princess hadn't eaten any food in a while. No food was to be found in the tower. She had felt countless aches and pains since her imprisonment. She knew that she was starving to death. She knew death was coming. She was looking forward to it. The peacefulness of death deemed merciful compared to the agony of waiting. Waiting for Prince Charming to arrive for him to save her. She had had enough of waiting for him. 
It was more than a year. How long would it take for him to make it from her kingdom? Carrying a sword and slaying the wizard, saving her and riding the white horse back to her castle where her parents were almost certainly waiting for her to return safely. Hugging her. Warmth. Food. Sleep. Sanity. She was sick of waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. She cried, tears falling from her cheeks, running down in rivers. Sobs echoed out of her mouth, covering the crickets. Pain, pain was all that she could feel at that point. Pain in her stomach, pain in her mind, pain everywhere. The princess felt like she was dying. Dying, dying, dying. She was so hungry. Her stomach rumbled as she looked down at her pale arm. From the look of it, the pale skin almost looked like meat. Meat, meat, so hungry, meat. She felt the rumble again. She stared at the skin, entranced by its appeal. The hunger was winning over the last remains, the last frail strings of her sanity and she found herself drooling. The drool hung from her chin on a string of saliva before dropping to the ground. Meat skin, meat skin, meat. Soon the voices started out, whispers in her ears, her ears tickling from their coldness. The princess tried to stop, covering her ears in an attempt at stopping what was coming, but it was too late. You know he'll never show up. You're doomed. No prince, no food. Unless... The voice was right. She was going to die in the tower. The prince would never arrive. She was going to starve to death. Unless... Food. I'm food. She whispered, desperateness driving her heart to beat a thousand thumps per second. She opened her mouth, leaning close to her wrist. She gripped her wrist with her other hand, tightening it around the elbow. Food, food, must eat. I'm, I'm meat. Eat the meat, eat, 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 eat. She licked her lips as she made up her mind. No more hunger, and no more pain. Now she chose her fate. She knew that if the prince would arrive the next morning, he'd find her quite happy. Happy and glad and laughing. Laughing, laughing, laughing like a joker. Laughing at her fate. Trap, 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 trap like a rabbit. And all the blood around her. Red, red as the sunset, pretty red, pretty red at his shocked and pale face. Funny face, his face so funny, funny face. Good meat, let's eat. <clears throat> she began to cackle as she dug in. Blood stained her teeth as she felt pain. Pain from hell rocked her nerves and seared her body as she dug into her own wrist, crunching bone and skin, but the pain was overwhelmed by her hunger. Soon she wasn't hungry any longer, and soon the only sound that remained was her mad laughter echoing from the tower.